on September 11, 2001, two commercial planes impacted the North and South Towers of the World Trade Center in downtown Manhattan. Less than two hours later, both towers lay in rubble. What would result if we applied a basic physics formula to this event? Given that the laws of physics were not suspended that morning, one can safely assume that the constants in the following formula are valid. The formula we will be using is height equals one half the acceleration times time squared. Our constants in this case will be the height of the North Tower of the World Trade Center, which was 1,368 feet. The acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared. Using this formula, we will be able to calculate the time it takes an object to hit the ground from the top of the North Tower, also indicating to us the time it would take an object in complete freefall to hit the ground when released from the top of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Inserting the constants into the previously mentioned formula, we get 1,368 feet, which was the height of the North Tower of the World Trade Center, equals one half times 32 feet per second squared, which is the acceleration due to gravity, times t in seconds squared. Next, we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, thereby getting, on the left side, 2,736 feet equals 32 feet per second squared times t in seconds squared, thereby removing the 1 half from the right side of the equation. The next step will be multiplying both sides by s squared, which would be seconds squared, giving us on the left side 2,736 feet times seconds squared equals 32 feet times t squared. After that, we divide both sides by feet, giving us 2,736 times s squared equals 32 times t squared. The next step would be to divide both sides by 32, giving us the result of 85.5 times s squared equals t squared. In the final step, we take the square root of both sides of the equation, giving us 9.246 seconds equals time thereby giving us the precise amount of time it would take an object in complete freefall to hit the ground from the top of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. As we will see in a moment, the North Tower went down in just about 10 seconds, which is statistically equivalent to the 9.246 seconds result we found in the previous formula. Pentagon, the Pentagon has been evacuated. And there's, you can see, perhaps the second tower, the front tower, the top portion of which is collapsing. Good Lord. There are no words. As we have just seen, the North Tower collapsed in approximately 10 seconds, indicating that it went into complete freefall. Had the North Tower not gone into complete freefall, it would have taken a longer time to collapse. This time, by definition, should have taken longer than the 10 second freefall time. Let's look at three scenarios which explore the possibilities as to how long it should have taken the North Tower to collapse had it been a true structural failure. In scenario one, had two floors failed each second, the whole tower would have taken 55 seconds to collapse. In scenario two, had three floors failed each second, the whole tower should have taken 36.6 seconds to collapse. And finally, in scenario three, had four floors failed each second, the whole tower would have taken 27.5 seconds to collapse. Thus, we see that there are differences of between 17.5 and 45 seconds from the time of the actual collapse of the North Tower 
and the time a collapse due to a true structural failure should have taken. So, the question remains, why did the North Tower go into complete freefall, indicating a simultaneous failure of all structural components throughout the tower, including ones thousands of feet from the impact point of the commercial airplane? A one-inch column has been reduced to half-inch thickness. Its edges, which are curled like a paper scroll, have been thinned to almost razor sharpness. Gaping holes, some larger than a silver dollar, let light shine through a formerly solid steel flange. The Swiss cheese appearance shocked all the Firewise professors, who expected to see distortion and bending, but not holes. Comment about the steel columns from the World Trade Center, the deep mystery of melted steel, Transformations, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Spring 2002. Perhaps we can start looking for answers to this question by viewing videos of the actual collapse of the North Tower. These videos will show massive unexplained fireballs running across the face of the tower in a symmetrical pattern. In a moment, we will view several replays of these fireballs in real time and in slow motion. As we can see in the following still pictures, there are a series of symmetrical fireballs running across the north and west faces of the tower, resulting from explosions of an undetermined origin. It should be noted that they are seen just prior to and during the collapse of the upper floors of the north tower, indicating structural failure of the components of the tower as a result of these explosions. In the top three frames, the fireballs are seen on multiple floors. In the bottom three frames, they are seen rippling across the faces of the tower in a symmetrical pattern, finally growing in size to diameters of about 40 to 50 feet. Among the unanswered questions are, what caused such huge explosions to be triggered with such precision? Why are there fireballs running symmetrically across the north and west faces of the building? Why have these explosions and fireballs never been properly addressed in building studies on the collapse of the towers? It appears that high explosives placed in the north tower prior to September 11th and detonated in a systemic fashion would be the only thing capable of producing such massive explosions and subsequent structural failure. Why, of course, the people don't want war. Why would some poor slob on a farm want to risk his life in a war when the best that he can get out of it is to come back to his farm in one piece? Naturally, the common people don't want war. That is understood. But, after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine the policy, and it is always a simple matter to drag the people along. Whether it is a democracy or fascist dictatorship, voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and exposing the country to greater danger. Hermann Goering, Nazi Reich Marshal and Luftwaffe Chief, Nuremberg, Germany, 18 April 1946.